Hello. Our session today is on computational breakthroughs and synergies with artificial intelligence. My name is Brendan McGinty, and I'm the director of the industry program at NCSA, the National Center for Supercomputing Applications on the campus of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. It's about two hours south of Chicago. And my name is Sage Korch. Uh, nice to uh, meet you all, at least electronically. Uh, I'm a technical assistant director of NCSA. I lead the uh, domain expertise teams and we are uh, primarily working with industry partners of NCSA, but sometimes also with academic users. And I'm also a research faculty at here at University of Illinois in Mechanical Science Engineering Department working on multi-physics and lately confluence with artificial intelligence. So at this point, I'm going to provide a very brief overview of our program, and then Dr. Korch will take it from there and talk about some of those breakthroughs and synergies. Our team has been around for over 30 years. You can see that in the middle of the screen, one of the first really working in supercomputing with industry uh, in the world. We are broken into now very dedicated teams providing solutions to industry, and we have vast resources from having been in existence since the mid 1980s. One of the unique things about our team is that we also have a dedication to providing support to industry specifically. So we have project management, program management. We help to define projects and gauge their effectiveness all the way to return on investment. The culture at the bottom, we work at industrial pace. We try to align with what industry is trying to do at the pace that they're doing it. And we take NDA, Sade likes to joke that our middle name is NDA, non-disclosure agreement, because we take confidentiality very seriously with all of our dedicated partners. The team is broken into these dedicated teams. The base of our program starting 30 years ago was in those, those uh, multi-physics and CFD domains that, that Sade mentioned in modeling and simulation. But now advanced computing is so much more. The growth of our bioinformatics and genomics program in the life sciences and healthcare, in drug discovery, in agriculture has been booming. And now all things AI, that third bullet, including geospatial now in big data, applies to those same sectors and other traditional HPC sectors in industry. And then on top of that, we do have a lot of dedicated compute resources and our visualization teams are, are world renowned. We have a series of clusters around the, the center that, that NCSA supports. A couple in particular, we say Starforge, it's really, it really started uh, 10 years ago now with iForge, our industrial cluster, general use machine dedicated to industrial workflows specifically. You can see a little bit about that particular machine here. What's evolved over time is that we are agnostic as to the type of machine that might be the best use for industrial partners. And many times they have something already in progress. Our emphasis has been on the A, the application side of NCSA uh, in recent years. With that, I'll turn it over to Said. Thank you, Brendan. Um, so this slide, we're going to talk about some of the amazing results we have actually achieved lately in uh, scaling on our uh, petascale, sustained petascale system of blue waters. So we were sort of uh, technological evangelists here. Uh, there was a common belief that simulation code, especially in engineering domain, they don't scale effic efficiently on large supercomputers. So you can see actually that we pretty much proved them wrong here on Blue Waters. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, one important ingredient here was that we have uh, uh, our industrial partners with uh, real world problems, uh, code developers, such as people from NCS, uh, from LS Dyna, from uh, even European, uh, our European partners from Barcelona Supercomputing Center with Alia, and then uh, the, the Cray, which, which was our hardware vendor. So we all worked together and we achieved some amazing results here, uh, showing that uh, it's actually possible to solve extreme size real world problems in multi-physics, geophysics on a petascale and potentially even on an exascale level 
which will add hopefully tremendous value in future in science engineering. Uh, so next slide, please, Brendan. Uh, so this is one of those cases. Actually, this is uh, uh, usually we, we can't say which partner, but in this case, we, we had the permission to say it's ExxonMobil, Exxon uh, which solves uh, Floyd uh, dynamics, which is flow through the porous medium equations on a numerical representation of the geology details from uh, subsurface imaging, I believe, uh, which is used to predict oil and gas production uh, from the reservoir. Um, and uh, according to our uh, colleagues from uh, ExxonMobil, the ROI, the return of investments was over a million, $1 billion. And this breakthrough in scalability unlocked the uh, new opportunity to geoscientists in, in engineering uh, in uh, ExxonMobil for optimal development and management of the oil and gas reservoir to minimize the cost and uh, also environment impact. Uh, next one, please, Brendan. Um, so this is the uh, one of those uh, classical statistical analysis uh, uh, that our partner was running on their desktop uh, with sort of spaghetti code. Uh, um, the, the, it, the use case is actually from agricultural, so they are optimizing location where the fertilizer or pesticides are applied in the big fields, and we are in the middle of big fields here in Illinois and how often is applied, what's the yield, income, machinery, power consumption, and et cetera. Uh, so in this case, uh, statistical power analysis was applied by my colleagues from data analytics teams, and uh, it helped to uh, decide how large a data sample is gonna be to enable a realistic statistic estimate and to detect uh, effects uh, given a, a particular situation here. So what, what really helped is twofold here. One was that uh, we had the world uh, expert in R uh, package who actually was able to uh, turn that spaghetti code into just over 50 lines, I believe. And then also the power of HPC, you can see the scaling. So at the end of the day, we were able actually to scale this uh, case for our partner from 175 days on their desktop, which is pretty much like a half of the year to actually less than three hours on uh, uh, on our uh, iForge exclusive industrial HPC system that Brendan was mentioning. Next they, one, please. They actually mentioned uh, that the return on investment was over $17 million a year on this one as well. Uh, so this is the actually uh, that uh, research work, uh, which uh, is very interesting to industry in the confluence of uh, modeling and simulation and artificial intelligence. So the major idea here is actually that uh, in these surrogate uh, data-driven models is that we train the artificial intelligence model to do some difficult and time-consuming modeling operations very efficiently, such as modeling in uh, highly nonlinear materials, structural optimizations, designs, uncertainty in qualification, even turbulence influence. Uh, so on this cartoon workflow, uh, you can see that we use HPC to generate a large amount of training and testing data samples, uh, often in order of tens of thousands of, of these data samples, uh, which are uh, corresponding to various uh, models and scenarios and parameterizations. Um, so we split the data in you know, a training and testing data, and then we move to GPUs, as you can see here, to train with training data and validate the testing data. Um, once we do that, we are in a good shape. So we can move the uh, learning parameters, which are weights and biases, to any laptop. And uh, we can instantly, what we like to say in artificial intelligence, inference results. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, from now on, uh, we can actually, without HPC, uh, get pretty good modeling simulation results. Uh, and uh, the, this is not a science fiction, really. I'll show you two cases in the next slide, please. So you can see the two cases uh, where we applied artificial intelligence in our uh, research, but also using the data from our industrial partners. So the first case is topological optimization, uh, which is a numerical method to optimize material layout. And uh, you basically you are running uh, in a loop, uh, lots of these finite element analysis, very time consuming, computationally consuming with different loads, boundary conditions and constraints to create a structure which is strong and lightweight and minimize uh, the material usage. Um, 
think about uh, our body, for example, as a very topological optimized structure with bone material put only where it's needed. Otherwise, it will be really heavy, right? Uh, so in this particular case, we use 13,000 different topological optimization scenarios with random optimized parameters uh, to train the surrogate convolutional neural network with three different objectives. objectives, objectives. One was uh, to maximize stiffness and minimize weights. And uh, uh, the other was uh, to minimize the Poisson ratio. And once the model was properly trained, we get, you can see on the right hand side, we, can, we get the optimized shape instantly on any computer. And then uh, from these unit cells, you can, you can see on the left uh, top side, uh, we can actually build a new material, so meta materials uh, that doesn't exist in nature. Um, and uh, the second case is even more interesting, more challenging. So actually, the second case is highly nonlinear viscoplastic case of steel solidification. Uh, so in this case, in this work, we had demonstrated for the first time how these innovative uh, sequence deep learning methods, such as temporal convolutional network, can learn uh, from modeling data. And then you can see on the right hand side, uh, correctly reproduce the complex history as well as time dependent and temperature dependent uh, stresses and temperatures from these complex materials, which are solidifying. Um, so this is just to give you an idea, we have many other cases. Uh, so next one, please, Brendan. And that reaches the end of our, our presentation. Our contact information is on the screen as well as our link to our web portal. We appreciate your time and attention and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you.